Okay, so I'd like to continue based on the previous example we were talking about, which was the uh, pointer code within the jar file for this week. So let's take a look in more detail about what's going on here. So in the beginning of this uh, code, we're making a primitive variable and we're assigning it the value 5. So all that does is it creates, I called it primitive 1 here and x over here, but it creates a space in memory, it puts the value 5 in it, and it calls it by the label that I give it. So it's very straightforward. When we create an array, it's a different sort of thing. When we create an array, it allocates a, enough space in memory to hold all of the items in the array, which in this case is three items. We put them in memory. And then we create a, a local variable that's called x, but inside x we have the, the pointer to the address in memory where that array is. So you can think of memory like a big table with uh, addresses indicating the row of the table and in this case I just picked a random address it's 57395 so it's pointing over here in memory to that location which is the first item in my array so that's how that that works and it's very fundamentally different than primitive variables so like we saw in the previous video that causes some problems sometimes so for example, if I want to create a new uh, array called Y, and I want it to have the same values in it the, that the X array has, I might think about doing that with an assignment operator, with a single equal sign, because that's how I would do that with primitive variables. The problem is, what happens is, if I, if I create the new array this way, what it does is, it creates space in memory, it labels it Y, and it puts the same thing in Y that's currently in X. But what's in X is not the values in the array, it's the address in memory. So that's what it puts in the variable Y. So now X and Y are both pointing at the same location in memory. So at first, it seems like everything's great because they both have the, ver uh, the values we're expecting, 1, 2, and 3 in this case. The problem is, when I change, let's say, the second value in the Y array, Y sub 1, and I make that 50, then this very, uh, number 2 here gets changed to be 50, and that change is for both of these arrays, since they're both pointing to the same place. Normally, when I make a copy of something, I want it to be a distinct copy, where if I later change one of them, it doesn't affect the original. And this doesn't do that. This isn't working uh, to provide that functionality. So instead, what we can do is, I showed you in the code, we can use the arrays.copyof method that's built into Java. So in this slide, we're going to take a look at what that method does kind of behind the scenes. So again, we have our X array that's pointing in memory at the location of the first value in that array. So what the arrays.copyof method does behind the scenes is it creates a new array. The keyword new uh, allocates new space in memory that's different from where X is stored. And I'm going to allocate enough space to hold three integers. So x.length is 3, so I'm going to hold 3 integers at this new memory location. So now the memory location it happened to pick was 57398. It could be anywhere in memory. It doesn't have to directly follow the other array. And then what I do is I'm loop. So initially, all these values are undefined. And I'm looping through the x array and copying one item at a time into the y array. So now I have two distinct arrays in memory. Now if I go and change the second item of the Y array to 50, it changes this number to 50. But the second item in the X array remains 2, which is what we want. So hopefully this clears this up a little bit. Pointers are always kind of difficult, but it's really important to get a good understanding of those.